Okay, we're gonna talk about blood flow. Why is blood flow so important? It's good to have some rules of thumb, heuristics that you go by, because you're gonna get asked a question. So and so, this patient has a problem. What can we do to help them get better faster? I can tell you, just about anything you could think of gets better faster with good blood flow. Blood flow is the river of life. No woman, no cry, no blood flow, you die, okay? Any wound someone has will heal better with good blood flow. Any fracture will heal better with good blood flow. Any organ system functions better with good blood flow, like the brain, for example, the muscles. You look at a lot of old people, they're all weak. A big part of that is thought to be you know, sarcopenia, the weakening of the muscles, is because of lack of blood supply to their muscles. Just like they got a lack of blood supply, a lot of old people to their brains, their hearts, their spine, they also got it to their muscles and their muscles atrophy. They become weak and then they fall down and they get terrible spine fractures. Anyways, this is a unifying concept for good health is what can one do to improve blood flow? And if you have this idea in your mind, it'll help you for pretty much tons of things you'll encounter from a health and a medical point of view. Um, the great Gregory Sloop, MD, here's his book on blood viscosity. It's the best book ever, and I've read everything you can get your hands on for atherosclerosis. This is the best book on atherosclerosis. Blood viscosity, it's role in cardiovascular physiology, pathophysiology and hematology, Greg Sloop, MD. Anyways, according to Sloop, he thinks almost all atherosclerosis risk factors in one way or the other lead to an increase in blood viscosity. They make the blood thicker. That's partly why diabetics have such terrible health and poor immune systems, poor wound healing, because their blood's thick with all the elevated blood sugar, elevated triglycerides, elevated free fatty acids, elevated advanced glycation end products, elevated cholesterols, um, and the secondary hypertension making everything worse. Okay, here's a quote from Jack Delatore, PhD. Here's his book, it's a very good book. He's a researcher of Alzheimer's disease, and he calls his book, Alzheimer's the Turning Point, a vascular approach to clinical prevention of Alzheimer's. Basically, the point is that almost all of the risk factors for Alzheimer's are associated one way or another with decreased blood supply to the brain. And it's typically on a chronic basis. Think about atrial fibrillation, for example. When you think about atrial fibrillation, AFib, you think, oh, gee, you form blood clots in the heart, left atrial appendage, toss them to the brain, have a stroke. But it's more than that. They have chronic underperfusion of their brain, okay? Carotid atherosclerosis, chronic underperfusion of the brain. Subsequent atherosclerosis intracranial due to excessive salt intake or due to excessive um, hypertension, they will have you know, blockages in those small arteries, decreased perfusion of the brain, increases the risk of Alzheimer's. So anyways, anything you want to heal or improve the function of in the human body, it will be better when there is good blood flow. So in our next lecture, we're going to talk about how do you optimize blood flow and you're going to find, when you get that question, so-and-so fell down, has a cut, has an infection, has a wound, has a fracture, you name it. You tell them how to improve blood, supply, blood flow and that will very often be helpful.